So culture, I've got the one and the only Sonny Rambo here with me. Of course, the elegant stallion herself. Onyeka Ongwenu. And guess what? T-Mac is here. You know, T-Mac, you know, people don't know that. I don't know what, uh, what, 1970-something? We used to live opposite each other uh, back in those days. And I, I came into your apartment one day, and I thought, well, these are people who will set the world on fire. And then you disappeared to America. <laughs> we saw you back. Come on. Culture, we've touched the world. Yes, we have. Please, Onyeka, take it away. Um, in 1973, 72, 73, correct me if I'm wrong, when the economy of the US was down, it was Hollywood to the rescue, virtually saved the country. Right now, what Nigeria is doing in entertainment around the world is phenomenal. And it is something that we started by going on strike in a military uh, administration when it was only a civil offense to pirate. And we said, no, it's criminal. We began to make the point that the entertainment industry is so important to spreading our culture, getting people to know us for who we are and what we can produce, and also for employment. When you see somebody like T-Mac, please look behind him, and there are families that are standing behind him that through his music, through his performances, he is supporting. So when people see us, they think, oh, it's this ego thing, oh, there are stars. No, 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 it's called show business. It's because you cannot have the show without the business, mm -hmm. and you can't have the business without the show. Mm -hmm. So in terms of earning, earning power of the young people, and even us older ones, still, we're hanging in tough, there is so much to be gained from the entertainment industry, but we don't take it seriously. The gains that we have made have been individual effort. And quite honestly, we, we don't need government to be involved in everything. What we are asking for is that proverbial en enabling environment mm -hmm. and a, 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 a level playing field so that we, with our brilliant ideas, with our films now catching the eye of the world, with our music rising high, we can tell them what Nigeria is about. There's greater respect for Nigeria because of the entertainment business. And what, in terms of what we're here to do, if, when, not if, when this administration comes in of a man who is a businessman, who also has an idea of what the entertainment industry can do, and his running mate, I'm talking about Obi Data. The whole thing changes mm -hmm. exponentially. We are going up. Because I don't want to operate in a country where there is so much violence, I can't carry out my craft. Going for a performance, we we're talking in the waiting room that you could perform in Zaria. You drive down to this and you mm -hmm. go, Kaduna, Kano, this. And, that. and it was all fun. And we were all sharing and getting to know parts of the country and then getting to know our music. We've lost all that. I rest my case. Yeah, no, clearly, um, it's not about government giving. It's about the environment. Yeah. You know, when Frank uh, Nguyenke was uh, Minister for Information and Culture, uh, at, at this point I was at the Film Corporation in a, a book, um, JOS. They set up a committee, panel, whatever they call these things, to look at how the motion picture business could be financed. Mm -hmm. And for whatever sins I had, they asked me to chair it. A lot of work was done. We are the fruits. So we need to find different ways to create that enabling environment so that we can thrive through culture. And you, Sonny, you have been in the middle of everything in Nigeria for the last 900 years. <laughs> <laughs> Why has it happened? <laughs> I think there was um, a major you know, setback. There's no willpower from government to even allow the enabling environment mm. to exist. Mm. And then the film industry wrestled its life from source. They didn't wait for anybody because if they waited, nothing would have happened. No. Music industry, the same thing. Yeah. 
So I'm not surprised. Everything Oyeka said is not only just so true, but uh, Timba, who is here with us, thank you. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't seen you in years. <laughs> yes. With your flute, mm. you used to just make your statement, whether government was listening or not. Mm -hmm. Were we in the media? We, I think we did our best. Did. Maybe not enough, but you did. You we did the best we could to make sure that individual talents had room to express themselves mm -hmm. and their talents. But then the buying public was prone to piracy, mm. enablement in being able to buy and sell, mm. and then there was no control. So all of those things put together made the entertainment industry a wishy-washy business, unfortunately. Now, the government said when, and I, I, I like the, the use of when. When this government comes in and it wakes up, uh, wakes up to its responsibility and promise, I have a feeling that the entertainment industry will skyrocket. Oh, I know it will. And, and, and that's why I think we can profit so much from T. Mark. Uh, he has worked the two sides of the Great Pond. I th like I said, I used to go to him across the road. I wasn't quite sure whether I was just a, an entertainer or a businessman. Yeah. <laughs> He's everything. Then, then he disappeared well. and showed up in Hollywood. <laughs> and on that side, he made impact. The question is, how do we manage to get young entertainers to understand the business that is show business? I would say show business is a reflection, is a mirror of the health of an economy. Mm. When a country does well, there's surplus money, people go to shows, True. they buy CDs. When mm. the economy is down, show business suffers. But if you have a listening government, they will help. I'll give an example. In Holland, where I worked for maybe one year, m I, I knew a saxophone player who was fed up with his saxophone. He broke it and went to the government and said, you, this is giving my income. The government bought him a saxophone. Can you imagine? Now, I'd like to give you a short story. When Christian Essien died, I got a phone call from His Excellency Peter Obi that he would like to be part of the funeral arrangements. And he was. You were there? And he was. He sent a private chat to pick up the coffin. All us, we flew there. He spent three days with us. He Empathy. gave a plot of land, 10 million for the mausoleum. And the best story I must tell you was, we had breakfast on the day of the funeral. And Madame was late. He said, well, you see, Timak, ladies, they always delay. I only have a black and a brown suit. <laughs> I said, I don't believe you. He said, come upstairs. So he took me to his bedroom, and because it was a funeral, he was dressed in his black dress with his black shoes. In his wardrobe was one brown up and down and a brown shoe. <laughs> I said to him, Your Excellency, I believe you. Mm. Down to earth, honest, supporting mm. the entertainment industry as I have never seen anybody. Mm. And we need a president like that because mm. with a little effort, moral support, uh, some some of our problems in the National Assembly supported, we can make the entertainment industry to support Nigeria as much as crude oil. Yep. Yep. Because much, we much have better, much, look, much we have the talent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm astonished. I get hundreds of CDs of people who need help. Banks don't help. The private industry doesn't help yet. They have not yet understood the value, how music and the films are now whitewashing Nigeria. Mm. Everywhere you go, people talk about fella, they mm -hmm. talk about whiskey. Uh, it is a revolution. Yeah. So it, you need the right person I'm to like, channel it I'm and like let's it. make money out of it. The big money as we make abroad. Now, you've got to humor me with listening to this story. In 1996, in the early days of the Lagos Business School, yeah. mm -hmm. we went to visit the dean of Wharton and wanted to meet the famous business, famous school. business school in Philadelphia, yeah. you know, their the top University of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. You know, the, um, you know, their top finance guy, world famous, this. So we go, and the dean calls him up and says, six people from Nigeria would like to meet with you. 
and we walk into this guy's office. I was expecting him to have horns like this, and you know, this great finance guru. He says, hey, you from Nigeria? Do you dig fella? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh yeah, they were digging him. Yeah! He said, do you dig fella? <laughs> and, and so, besides the revenues that we can get as a country from selling culture, which is huge. In fact, uh, Nollywood, sorry, Hollywood, essentially shapes America's dominance of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through the blue jeans mm -hmm. that everybody wears. It's because of the movies. The movies yes. made it the mm -hmm. export mm -hmm. for the, the world. Music. Mm -hmm. The music. You know? it, it used to be that I'll say to my children, hey, which of my songs do you want to hear? We want to hear Michael Jackson. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Michael Jackson. But they had Michael Jackson's music. Yeah. American music had taken over. We began to pull it back for Nigeria, yeah. and let me say this very quickly. You have a population of 200 million people. Can we please realize the market yeah. we have here? Even and if it's half of even it. Even if yeah. it, so now we are, we are enjoying our own music. We still love the American and the mm -hmm. world, whatever, mm -hmm. but we are digging yeah. our own music. We have a huge market here. In terms of Nollywood, second largest, or is it third largest in the world? We are buying and also sharing with the rest of the world. And very quickly, I'd like to add to what my brother, t Mike said here. Because what you, when you spoke about the LP candidate, by the way, when you're voting, you're not going to see his face. Mm -hmm. What you're going to see is the party, Mama, Papa, Papa, Mama and the, the family. Yeah. That is where you put your thumb. And if your thumb is too big, use your index finger mm -hmm. so that it's not extending to the side mm -hmm. of the... And if your fingernails are too long, take, take it off. Take the fingernail off. off. <laughs> you can put it back on. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. So in, what you said about Christy was so true. What about Peace Square? What about Chima Amanda when she needed help? Mm. It's called empathy. When you have a man at the top who empathizes, not just with musicians, but with ordinary people that he can spend his Christmas mm. and his new year. Yeah, mm -hmm. That tells you the kind of government mm -hmm. that you're going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I call him Namoche. I'm from Arondizog, which is in Imo State. My mom is from Anambra, Obosi. Mm -hmm. When my mom died and I let him know, I don't know, God must have spoken to him because I'm the one carrying everything. I'm the one burying my mom. I had, I had relatives, I had siblings, but I was carrying everything. They say he doesn't give shishi. No, what he does, he doesn't give carelessly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But because of that empathy, he reached out to me. He sent his uh, vice to represent him there. That was a big deal, mm -hmm. support for me. He sent me cash. Oh boy, did I need it that morning when he came. He sent me a car load of drinks. Oh, did I need it. Now, I can talk about the other candidates. They all too have this empathy, but we're here talking about the LP candidate. And I want to bust that wrong impression. He doesn't give shish. No, he doesn't throw away money. He doesn't mm -hmm. use money carelessly. He's not frivolous. His use of money is not frivolous. It's purposeful. Mm -hmm. It's directional. Mm -hmm. And he's a good man. God bless you, Namuchi. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, really, what we're dealing with here, we've talked about the economy so much today, but people forget that culture is the economy. Yeah. Uh, a strategy for enabling us to turn culture into a major source of, of income. income. Tourism, income. You know, one of the problems that we have in our country is that we have a day economy. We don't have a night economy. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. one... Power, to security, security, and all of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we were younger, when I was an undergraduate here in Nigeria, we used to go to, what was it, place in Martin Street? Uh, uh -huh. at, can, can by Phoenicia. Phoenicia restaurant, yeah. all of yes. Or Kaban, Bamboo. Kaban, you know, Bamboo. Leave, leave at 4 3 a.m. with a taxi. Yes. Leave. Now, that's hardly what you can do. Yeah. We need to restore the night economy. Because we'll employ twice as many people if we have a day economy and a night economy. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives life to an economy. Because all those people who earn money are going to spend it and create more possibilities for other people. That's why in, in economics we talk about the secular flows of income. Absolutely. And these keep flowing around from households to government, their taxes, 
to companies when we purchase things. This is what we need to get this economy going. And a big part of it is culture. Dr. Dr. Tommy, Dr. Tommy, you know, because I have to mention a few other places where mm -hmm. we used to go and party because mm -hmm. I don't know, you're, you're too old. And, <laughs> and, and, and we need to bring it down to the level of yeah, us, to do it. the youngies. <laughs> yes. You know, Sonny would agree with me and Tim, I do. remember Lords. Oh, yeah. Lords oh, 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 yes. Yes. Even yeah. Night Shift yeah. and all the Paradiso, Phase 2. Phase two. Where are they? Urbanization just went down the drain. Yeah, it did. That's what happened. But they are very Fear important for two reasons. Tourism. Yes. Gentlemen, no country has a good tourism without entertainment industry. Absolutely. As an Absolutely. example, Thailand is the best example. Everywhere there's music, restaurants, nightclubs, in the open fields, mm -hmm. parks. On the king's birthday, mm. the, the late king, the whole country had to play jazz because mm. he was a saxophone player with Count Basie before, mm. he, became, oh, wow. before he became the king mm. as a young guy. And I had the pleasure to perform about 20 years ago. And I said to myself, Nigeria has to copy that because people go to visit the country, they don't to go out at night, mm. listen to some... Afrobeat, listen to some jazz, listen to local music, Fuji Juju. What do you think is one of the great passions of the president of France? Music. Fela. Yeah. <laughs> when he was here, Evo he used to go shrine. to the shrine. Yeah. And as president, even, he, he came, came back and visited the shrine. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So, That's correct. power, soft power. Yes. Can we it's part bring of what he gives us. In here. The what? Banks. <clears throat> okay. I like the scratch. You know. yeah. <laughs> no, so I was fixing my up. earring. Yes, okay. <laughs> the reason being that, I mean, for such economy to thrive, you have to have a base. Urban centers, urban centers should normally encourage enterprise mm -hmm. to the point where you raise money, you can save it in the bank, and you can get access to it and recycle it into the system. That. Can I answer this? The Bank yes. of Industry is actually doing a good job, but they don't have counters. Mm. They finance Nollywood movies. I mm. had um, good meetings with them. If an artist comes with a good proposal mm. and he has no collateral, they will listen and they help. They are the only ones. But there was a couple of years ago, the rumor that the World Bank had 200 million available for the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And I worked very hard with them together. In the end, there was no money there, actually. Mm -hmm. But I realized one thing, uh, that then the people in power did not understand that it would be actually better use that money and create money in investing it into medium term, no trading or something, so you can give a grant and not a loan. You can uh -huh. give somebody 10 million naira because he deserves it, not as a loan, but as a gift, but make the best out of it and account to us. And that's what I'm trying to talk to banks. You are so rich. You're making billions and billions every quarter. There is actually the endowment of the art yes. from Festark time saying you put money into education and the art is tax deductible yes. up to 10% of your pre-tax. Mm -hmm. And nobody remembers that. You can write it off your tax. Ten percent you can give the entertainment industry. Give it to credible people. We formed the Entertainment Cooperative Society. They know that. We formed the Entertainment uh, Foundation where you can put money in. We know which of the musicians are serious. Mm -hmm. We don't give it just to anybody and disappear. There are many musicians with a little financial help. They could They're do much fun. more. They would be up mm -hmm. there. See, Mike, let me remind you that we here have been in the business for a long time. And we've been there, we got to the top and we stayed at the top. Why? I'm self-financing. Mm -hmm, in the 1980s, the record companies began to divest mm -hmm. from Nigeria, Nigeria in droves. Mm -hmm. um, EMI, yeah, them, EMI, Polygram, Decca, uh, uh, um, the they left. Yeah. closed down, there were people like us who formed record companies. You go and do your shows, you save your money, and you put into your recording. You are financing every, even up until now. And it's because we don't have that environment where people understand that investment in the arts is really good yeah. investment. 
that you make money from. We need that enabling environment. That enabling environment. That's the key. When the new government comes in, I would hope and but pray <coughs> that high school could be. Yes, that new government does need some pushing from the people at play. Yeah. Because institutions are the very bedrock of human progress. And institutions do not get decreed into existence. Institutions come from interested parties mm -hmm. engaging in a manner that they begin to create boundaries within which you can predict conduct. And that's what we need to do. That's what the people who have gone out and are doing things in Nollywood have started. The thing is to build on what they have done to make those concrete yes. and allow the state to use it to ensure that people get the opportunities that they deserve. So we can build a great country so our children can be proud and show that green passport yeah. mm -hmm. and say, that. yes, I am Nigerian. I love that. Well, the, the idea of being a Nigerian, and proudly so, yes. is happening already. Mm -hmm. There are Nigerians in governments of the world. Oh, yeah. The United States governments, British governments, yeah. European governments. Yes. So what is left is the challenge is for us now to recognize what we have, who we are, and the talents we possess to make all these things work. I mean, talk about talents. The Nigerians who are living abroad, who are actually entertaining successfully and making money abroad. We're not bringing it home. Well, yeah, they now live abroad. We have to find a way of ensuring that as global citizens, mm -hmm. we work the world and invest in Nigeria. That's I'd like to say to um, my people in the entertainment industry, we have a marvelous opportunity here to rescue this country. Don't sit back and think that somebody's going to do it for you. We've had our complaints, yeah? Mm -hmm. We've had our issues. And for some reason, everything is coalescing together. It's coming together mm -hmm. that we have a, a listening uh, candidate who would make a listening president who is going to fight corruption, which leads to the flight of funds mm -hmm. outside my country so that I don't have that investment coming in unless I bring it personally. Wherever you are, if you do not have your PVC already, go and fetch it. Go and vote. Do this for yourself. Do it for your children. Do it for your grandchildren. Do it for the future. We don't have an opportunity. We know we've come close to the brink so many times. Mm. And this God who is a Nigerian has always pulled us back. Mm -hmm. But this one, get as he be. Mm -hmm. He has given you the opportunity. He has given you the candidates. Now it's up to you to do something about it. You will put them there. Mm -hmm. So don't sit back and think that other people are going to do it for you. You will regret it. Please hear me and hear me well. I may add here something which is very important. After the new government is there, musicians and actors have to support the government in paying tax. We Absolutely. have to add to the gross mm -hmm. domestic product so we become vulnerable to the government. Absolutely. The moment we all pay tax, we become more and more important to the government. I was involved with um, trying to get musicians to pay tax. And then we had to go to the way, asking MTN, Glow, etc., to deduct from the at source, from the ringtone, I found mm. that some musicians were making 10, 20 million naira a month and not paying tax from ringtone. Mm. Yes, but so, some companies were paying and some were not paying. And I'd like to complain about that. I'm not going to name them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when this government comes in, mm -hmm. things have to be done properly. Yes. We do a lot of work and people are violating and making use of our intellectual property, mm. we have fought and fought and fought. We need a reasonable government that will make sure. There are many musicians who are hungry. That's why you mm. don't see them. They are starving. Mm. It's not everyone that has the opportunity to bring out a song and it goes to the top 10. Mm. It's not everybody that has the opportunity to do a live show. We are fortunate, thank God. But I'm thinking of my fellow musicians 
who cannot put food on the table, yet they're so talented. I'm thinking of the young people that God has give, given them such huge talents, but no way to show it. Yeah. This is the problem we have. Anyway, uh, time speeds away hmm. when you are having fun. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> and it has done so to us. This has been a marathon, but it's all time is almost all gone. We have only two, and, two hours and a little to go. So we must end this, even though we're enjoying ourselves so much. Um, what is important is that culture matters. Yes. Yes. Culture, tourism, entertainment. Crucial. Absolutely. Crucial. Go there and vote. Yes, Ensure that you collect your PVC and that you vote and you beat that revolution. We'll move us to the next level. <laughs>